Hello, welcome back. We're going to tackle this op amp problem. This one's a little bit more complicated, um, mostly because the feedback resistance has an extra resistor that's connected to ground between two other resistors. So this is a configuration we haven't seen before, but the, the gist of the problem is basically the same. We have a voltage source, 150 millivolts, going through uh, an initial resistor. We have a feedback resistance, but this feedback resistance is a little ugly, but, but it is basically a feedback network up there. And we have an output resistor, and what we're trying to find is a whole lot of things about this circuit. We want to find the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor, which is the voltage across this resistance right there. We want to find the output resistance right there. We want to find the current through the 40 uh, kilo ohm resistor, which is the current flowing up through that leg right there. And we want to find the output current, but the output current is defined in this problem to be flowing right to left, which as we talked about before, that, that's kind of the initial thing we, when we define the currents and the voltages for the op amp, the output current was always defined to be flowing in. It might be flowing out sometime, you know, some of the time. Basically, you're going to get negative numbers for some of these, or you might get negative numbers for some of these. If you do get negative numbers, it just means that the arrows and the directions we've drawn in the picture are backwards from reality, but we're going to honor the drawing, and we're going to actually have to add our own variables to solve this stuff. So we'll have to talk about the current through here, the, the voltage across here and across here and so on. So the big picture though, the ultimate big picture is that we know that this non-inverting terminal has zero volts because it's grounded. And because of the virtual short, we know that this node right here is zero volts. So that immediately lets us calculate because we'll know the voltage drop across that resistance. We can find that current. But the problem arises basically because of this network. Because, because of that, we know the current going up there we can find, but then it's going to split and that causes some issues because it's not going to be very easy for us to, to do a voltage loop because we, we're not going to immediately know the current flowing through this resistor. That's essentially the, the, the problem. We want to find a voltage, a Kirchhoff voltage loop to go up and around some sort of way uh, either this direction back to ground or this direction back to ground, but either way we'll need to know the current through this resistor to find its voltage drop, otherwise we won't be able to make any progress. So what we're going to do is take it step by step and, and, and uh, it's not, there are no tricks or shortcuts to it, we're just going to have to examine what we have and calculate what we have and figure out if there's a way to get where we need to go, but you, you're not going to be able to look at these problems and just know it ahead of time. So let's go through and we'll, we'll tackle it step by step right now. All right, so our first step on the journey is that we know that this is grounded, so we know it's zero volts, so then we know that this is zero volts, and I always write that so I can remind myself of that. And as we said before, since we know the voltage on both sides of this resistor, we can calculate the current, and since this is a higher voltage than this, I'm going to make the assumption that the current is 